Hey everybody, this is Mr. Bell's Math Class. It's a beautiful day in Portland, and today we are gonna talk about halves and taking half uh, of larger numbers. And we'll use this really similar strategy to my doubles lesson, which is right here. And without further ado, let's get started. So, if we're gonna be taking half of numbers, first we should understand what first we should understand what half means. So when we're taking half of something, we are splitting it into two equal pieces. So let's say, you know, a number like eight, eight is one number, but it's technically made up of eight things. And if we want to split that number eight into two equal pieces, we need two parts that when added together will make eight, which would be four, because four plus four is eight. Another way to think about taking half is taking half as the opposite of doubling. So 4 doubled, or 4 plus 4 is 8, so half of 8 is 4. So if I want to figure out what half of 12 is, I would just ask myself, what doubled is equal to 12? Well, 6 doubled is equal to 12, so half of 12 is 6. So taking half is breaking something into two equal parts, or it's also known as the opposite of doubling. Now, that's helpful for smaller numbers, but if I want to take half of a larger number, like 48, I don't know a lot of my larger doubles off the top of my head, but what I can do is split this up. And kind of like with doubles, we're going to split it up by place value. What I mean by that is this is a two-digit number, 48. So the 4 and the 8 both mean different things based on their place or their place value. So this 4 is technically a 40, and the 8 is just an 8. Now, in order to take half of 48, I'll take half of those separately. So half of 40 is 20, because half of 4 is 2, and half of 8 is 4. And when I put these back together, I will get 24. Now, for a number like 56, we'll use a similar process. We'll break it up by place value. So 50 and 6. Half of 50 is 25, and half of 6 is 3. So for half of 56, we'll put these back together, and half of 56 will be 28. Now, in order to do problems like this, you will need to know half of all of your multiples of 10, so like half of 10, half of 20, half of 30, half of 40, as well as know half of everything from 1 all the way up to 10. So for this next one, this one has an odd number in the 1's place. So we'll have to be able to do half of 5. And what we'll split 85 up into is... Yep, you're right, 80 and 5. Now in order to take half of 85, we'll take half of these separately. Half of 8 is 4, so half of 80 is 40. Half of 5, well I know half of 4 is 2, so half of 5 will be 2 and a half. And there will be another lesson right here if you're interested in taking half of odd numbers. Now for the last one, this one is a three digit number, so Instead of breaking it into just two pieces, we're going to break it into three pieces, one for each one of those digits. So the four will be 400 because it's in the hundreds place. The seven will be 70 and the two will stay two. So when we take half of each of those, half of four is two. So half of four hundreds is 200. Half of 70, well, I know half of 60 is 30 and I use that to help me know that half of 70 is 35 and half of two is one. And then to figure out half of 472, I'll just put those all back together. And there we are, half of 472 is 236. So this is a um, efficient way to take half of larger numbers without having to you know grab a calculator or uh, do long division. We just have to break it up by parts and then put it back together. Hey, I hope that helped out. And if it did, please like and subscribe and check out some of my other videos. And I look forward to seeing you all next time. Thanks, guys. In Mr. Bell's class. Very nice.